Hey, what's up, everyone? Today, I want to share with you a project that was quick and easy. In just two and a half months, I was able to make a hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. If you're new to the channel, I'm a house flipper in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I've been flipping houses for three years now. 2019 was my first seven-figure profit year, so I want to teach more people to get started in real estate investing and achieve financial freedom through this channel. So if you are interested, don't forget to subscribe. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how I got this deal, the before and after walkthrough, the sale process. All the numbers and my takeaways. Let's start from how I got this deal. If you've seen my other videos, you probably know that I get all of my deals off market from real estate agents, and this one was no exception. My agent knows the other agent who was representing the seller on the sale, and the deal was available to me exclusively off market. The seller inherited the house, but didn't want anything to do with it. She wanted to get rid of it and have money in the bank account fast. This is actually pretty typical for people inherit properties. They usually don't have any attachment to the houses, and they probably moved out many years ago. They don't want to have to put in any work, and they just want to get money quick. I've purchased many inherited houses before, and they are great opportunities for investors to pick up fixer-uppers off market. Because the seller wanted cash quickly, after seeing the house with my contractor, I made a non-contingent offer that closes in one week. Because hard money loans can be funded very quickly, usually within a week in my area, so my offer was actually considered all cash. And that's very appealing to sellers. So the seller accepted my offer at 1.1 million. When I purchased the house, my estimated after repair value was 1.45, and my estimated profit was 137,000 with a projected return of 10%. So this is actually lower than my current criteria of 15% return on all the money invested. But I still decided to go with the deal for a few reasons. First of all, I used to live in the same city, and this house was essentially in my own backyard. The house was about a quarter mile from my old house, and I know the market very well. This house is also in a great school district, especially the elementary school. It's rated a nine out of ten. Houses in good school districts are always desirable because parents would rather pay a premium to have access to good public schools than having to spend a ton of money to send their kids to private schools. Last but not least, the house has very good bones, so I didn't have to spend a lot of money on the big ticket items like roof or HVAC. The house also has a good flow, so I didn't have to move walls to change the layout. So I knew that this was going to be a very quick project. I always prefer to make a smaller profit from a quick and easy project than a larger profit from a longer project, because the longer the project takes, the more risk and uncertainty there is. Let's check out the before of the project. I offered the seller to take care of any unwanted items, and she definitely took me up on it. There was a bunch of furniture left in front of the house when I took over the ownership, and the front yard was quite a jungle with plants overgrown. The house was built in the 1960s. It has three bedroom, two baths, 1,400 square feet. The living room has a dated fireplace. The house has popcorn ceiling throughout, and we have to get rid of it. But the original hardwood floors are in good condition. From the dining space, you can see that some built-in cabinets separated from the living room, but we can easily remove it to create an open concept. The kitchen is all original with white appliances. It has a small opening looking into the adjacent family room. The guest bathroom is very dated, and we have to gut it all. The bedrooms are on the smaller side, but the hardwood floors can be easily refinished. The master bathroom is small, but I plan to expand the shower to better use the space. The family room has an ugly brick fireplace. It also needs new flooring. 
Once we make the opening bigger, the family room would be better for entertaining. The backyard is generously sized, but the deck needs to be repaired and painted, and we'll need to remove the bushes and put in new sod. Three weeks into the project, we've made a lot of progress. The jungle in the front yard is gone. We've installed new flooring in the kitchen and dining room to match the rest of the house. We gutted the kitchen and made the opening much bigger. In the bathrooms, we're done with the rough electrical and plumbing. In the bedrooms, we installed new doors and reframed the closets. In the master bathroom, the shower is so much bigger now. Because the scope of work was so straightforward, just mainly kitchen and bathroom remodel, it took us only five weeks to complete all the work. Let's see what the house looks like after. The jungle in the front yard is replaced with a lush new lawn. The exterior is all cleaned up and freshly painted. Welcome to our new flipping Campbell. In the living room, we refinished the hardwood floors and installed a lot of recess lights to brighten up the space. We also refinished the fireplace. We used Kelly Moore Winters Park to paint the bricks which is two shades darker than the wall color so it gives a nice contrast and becomes a nice focal point of the living space. We created a big open space by enlarging the wall opening in the kitchen so we achieved the open concept without having to break the bank. The kitchen is pretty small. By keeping it all white, we actually make it look more spacious. The countertop and backsplash are details that can't be overlooked. If you do it right, you can really make your buyers fall in love. In the master bathroom, we use this prefab vanity from Home Depot. And the shower tiles are an inexpensive ceramic that look like marble. So we created this updated look on a reasonable budget. The backyard has all new landscaping, and it feels so much more spacious and family-friendly. After seeing the highlights, let's check out the flow of the whole house. The house came out beautiful and we had a ton of interest, but we did have a small hiccup during the sale process. The house was put on the market in the winter time when the market was a little slow. So even though we had a ton of interest, we only had two offers. One of them was below asking price and the other one was well above asking. So we didn't have a lot of options but to take the higher offer. But the higher offer came with an appraisal and a loan contingency, so we had to wait it out. Unfortunately, when the appraisal came back, it was $120,000 below the contract price. It was just shocking because I know the market over there so well and when I was doing my analysis and came up with 1.45 after repair value, I was being conservative. I had no idea how the appraiser could come up with a value of 1.35. It was just way off. It was really bad news because it gave the buyer an opportunity to back out. And if the buyer had second thoughts and decided to back out, we would have no choice but to put the house back on the market. But luckily, our buyer decided to stick it out. They even switched lenders to get a new appraisal. 
Fortunately, the second appraisal came at value, and my nightmare was over. The buyer did tell us later on that they had seen so many houses in the area, and my house stood out from the competition for the quality of work. Let's look at the final numbers. The sale price was 1.47, and the rehab cost didn't change. It's still 95,000, and the final profit was 165,000. The project turned out to be a big success, not just because of the sizable profit, but also because of the turnaround time. From the close of purchase to the close of sale, it only took two and a half months total, and it was my quickest flip ever. My takeaways of the project. As mentioned earlier, inheritances can be great flip opportunities because oftentimes heirs want nothing to do with the properties and all they want is quick cash. Also, houses in good school districts are safer investments, especially when the market is slow. For flips, quick turnaround time is really key. Even if the margin is smaller, it might still be worth it. Last but not least, Always pay attention to the design and quality of work on your flips because they can make your flips stand out from the competition and earn you committed buyers. If you are interested in seeing my other flips, check out this project where I did a full-on remodel and garage conversion and made $300,000 in profit. Also, this quarter house flip where I spent $40,000 and made $80,000 in profit. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.